Until 1.40 in the afternoon, it was just another day in the life of the United States. CBS was presenting As the World Turned. Nancy, cleaning up in here already? Well, yes, that's right. Ain't it a little early for that, ain't Anna coming tomorrow? Here is a bulletin from CBS News. In Dallas, Texas, three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade in downtown Dallas. The first reports say that President Kennedy has been seriously wounded by this shooting. More details just arrived. President Kennedy shot today just as his motorcade left downtown Dallas. Mrs. Kennedy jumped up and grabbed Mr. Kennedy. She called, oh no, the motorcade sped on. United Press says that the wounds for President Kennedy perhaps could be fatal. Repeating, President Kennedy has been shot by a would-be assassin in Dallas, Texas. Stay tuned to CBS News for further details. It takes more than an instant to make a real cup of coffee. That's why Nescafe has come up with a... Further details on an assassination attempt against President Kennedy in Dallas, Texas. President Kennedy was shot as he drove from Dallas Airport to downtown Dallas. Governor Connolly of Texas in the car with him was also shot. It is reported that three bullets rang out. The president, cradled in the arms of his wife, Mrs. Kennedy, was carried to an ambulance and the car rushed to Parkland Hospital outside Dallas. The president was taken to an emergency room in the hospital. We will keep you advised as more details come in. Stay tuned to CBS News for further details. On November 22nd, 1963, the president of the United States was assassinated. And for four days, America went into an unparalleled state of grief and shock. That's why CBS News stayed on the air for 56 hours. The broadcast which follows is made from films and tapes from those dark days. Every fact and opinion you hear comes from our coverage at the time. For our part, we make no comment on the past. We only bring it back. Four days in November, 1963. The assassination of President Kennedy. This is Walter Cronkite in our newsroom in... There has been an attempt, as perhaps you know now, on the life of President Kennedy. He was wounded in an automobile driving from Dallas Airport into downtown Dallas, along with Governor Connolly of Texas. They've been taken to Parkland Hospital there, where their condition is as yet unknown. We have not been told their condition at Dallas. In the downtown hotel room, a group had been gathered to hear President Kennedy when he was waiting his arrival. Let's switch down there now, where Eddie Barker of KRLD is on the air. As you can imagine, there are many stories that are coming in now as to the actual condition of the president. One is that he is dead. This cannot be confirmed. Another is that uh, Governor Connolly is in the operating room. This we have not confirmed. The president was whisked from the scene of the attempted assassination or assassination, depending upon his condition, of course, at this hour, uh, by bus to... Parkland Hospital, and uh, the president uh, undoubtedly is in the emergency room at that hospital, which would be on the first floor of uh, Parkland. No uh, word as yet. We are awaiting something more official. It is, of course, difficult, certainly, uh, to go on scanty reports. Uh... This is Walter Cronkite back at the CBS Newsroom in New York. We have just been advised from Dallas that blood transfusions are being given to President Kennedy. Let us recall for you now what has transpired in this. KRLD is reporting they've been told by somebody in the hospital the president is dead. Only a rumor, but they've been told that. KRLD is saying. Well, that's a repeat of something that you heard reported to you directly a moment ago from KRLD television in Dallas. And that is the rumor that has reached them at the, the hotel that uh, the president is dead. Totally unconfirmed, apparently, as yet. However, let's go back to KRLD in Dallas. Operating room, we do not know what his condition is. But the report is that the president is dead. This is not confirmed. This is something that uh, word just came to us 
a minute ago. The word we have is that President Kennedy is dead. This we do not know for a fact. The word we have is that he is dead, that he was sh shot by an assassin at the intersection of Elm and Houston Streets uh, just as he was going into the underpass. The word we have is from a doctor on the staff of Parkland Hospital who says that it is true. He was in tears when he told me just a moment ago. This is still not officially confirmed, but as I say, the source would normally be a good one. That was Eddie Barker at our affiliate KRLD in Dallas, Texas, speaking from the room where President Kennedy had been scheduled to make an address to three Dallas organizations, but an assassin's bullets cut him down on the way to that meeting from the airport. It was just an hour ago that the incident took place. We have just learned, however, ever that Father Huber, one of the two priests called into the room, has administered the last sacrament of the church to President Kennedy. Regarding the probable assassin, the sheriff's officers have taken a young man into custody at the scene, a man 25 years old. We, are re we just have a report from our correspondent, Dan, rather in Dallas, that he has confirmed that President Kennedy is dead. There is still no official confirmation of this, however. It's a report from our correspondent, Dan Rather, in Dallas, Texas. We're now going into that Dallas uh, luncheon the president had planned to address. Let's go back. Prayers, we understand, are underway. That he may reveal that calm that shall be pleasing to thee. Vice President Lyndon Johnson has not been seen in the corridors of the Parkland Hospital. He was uh, said to perhaps have been slightly wounded in the arm. Mrs. Lyndon Johnson says that the Vice President, though, is fine. Throughout the streets of Dallas, the Dallas police had been augmented by some 400 uh, policemen called in on their day off because there were some fears and concerns in Dallas uh, that... Uh, that there might be demonstrations, at least, that could embarrass the president. Because it was only on October the 24th that our ambassador to the United Nations, Adley Stevenson, uh, was assaulted in Dallas, uh, leaving a dinner meeting there. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time some 38 minutes ago. Vice President Lyndon Johnson <clears throat> has left the hospital in uh, Dallas, but we do not know uh, to where he has proceeded. Uh, presumably, he will be taking the oath of office shortly and become uh, the 36th President of the United States. Color Tile's 35th anniversary sale is on now. But hurry, it's the final week to save up to 50% on our huge selection of ceramics, vinyl, even wall coverings. This handsome ceramic, only 64 cents. Every in-stock Armstrong Sundial Solarian Sheet Vinyl, just $9.99. This fashionable ceramic, only $139. And decorative bouquet wall tiles, just $199. It's the final week to save up to 50% at Color Tile's 35th anniversary sale. But hurry, sale ends Sunday. Come now and bring the beauty home. There's something exciting going on this Friday and Saturday at J.C. Penney. The two-day sale. Two big days to save throughout the store. The two-day sale this Friday and Saturday. J.C. Penney. Why waste time with slow working oven cleaners? Make it easy on yourself. Original heavy-duty easy off oven cleaner works up to 40% faster than those other brands. Make it easy on yourself. With easy off. In 1963, television news was broadcast in black and white. Lightweight, portable tape equipment did not exist. Our signals moved mostly by hard wire or microwave relay. In some film clips that follow, you will see watermarks looking like rain on the screen. The film had had no chance to dry out. It was broadcast from wet stock. But the message went out across the country. Like a fire bell in the night, 
a fearful communication reached across a continent, across the oceans. The leader of the free world was dead. We returned to New York at 2.40, November 22nd, 1963, day one. As we told you a moment ago, President Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas today. He was shot in Dallas at 12.25 as his car proceeded through the crowded streets of Dallas. He died 35 minutes later in the Dallas Parkland Hospital. Governor John Connolly of Texas was also shot by the assassin. The condition uh, in which Governor Connolly now is, we do not know as yet. Walter, we have some additional film taken at and near Parkland Hospital where President John Kennedy died. Uh, this film is in rough cut form. These are some of the witnesses in the area of the shooting. There was a great deal of disbelief at first that the president had even been shot and even more disbelief that he was dead. Hospital sources gave this report of the arrival at the emergency entrance to the hospital and I quote from the hospital. The president was lying motionless in the car. Mrs. Kennedy was leaning over him, holding him. Governor Connolly was leaning back in the seat, holding his stomach. Both men were covered with blood. Mrs. Kennedy reported he held up very well inside. She was heard only to say, Jack, Jack, no, no. We are told uh, that the gunshot wound, the fatal wound inflicted on the President of the United States, entered at the base of the throat and came out at the base of the neck on uh, the back side. We just got the word that Lyndon B. Johnson has been sworn in as the President of the United States. He was sworn in at 1.38 Central Standard Time. That was 2.38, and that's uh, uh, almost an hour and a half ago now, if this time is correct here. Uh, he was, uh, the oath was administered to him by uh, U.S. District Judge Sarah T. Hughes. Uh, he took the oath aboard the presidential plane at Love Field just prior to a takeoff to return to Washington. We still do not know who the assassin was or what was his motive. The prime, <clears throat> prime person suspected is a man who was cornered and seized in a movie theater in the Oak, Oak Cliff section of Dallas, Texas, soon after the assassination. They refer to him as the man in a brown shirt. He shot and killed a police officer before he was subdued. We have some late film now from Dallas, Texas, and so for that film, we switch now to Dan Rather in Dallas. These are scenes at a building across the street from the scene where President Kennedy was shot. Police immediately ring this building. It's believed that the assassin was in that, this same building on either the fourth or fifth floor. Witnesses said they believe three or four shots were fired. Some entry cartridges have been found in that building. A number of suspects were picked up immediately. Practically anyone in the area who even gave a hint of looking suspicious was picked up. Police thought they might be able to catch the assassin still in the building. They were unsuccessful in that. Up there on the fourth or fifth floor, perhaps out of one of those open windows, is where the assassin of President Kennedy is believed to have fired the fatal shots. As we mentioned a short while ago, a number of arrests have been made in Dallas in the wake of President Kennedy's death. We have scenes of one of those arrests in the downtown area. This was just after a Dallas policeman was shot in the vicinity of a downtown movie house. The suspect was brought immediately to police headquarters. Uh, that particular suspect is among many who is being questioned. Uh, not all of them in connection with the, the shooting. Some of the uh, suspects are simply are being questioned as possibly to what they saw. The Dallas police headquarters is literally alive with people who have been brought in off the streets, uh, arrested for one cause or another. Here's late information on the man that they have arrested in Dallas and who is called at the moment the prime suspect in the assassination of President Kennedy. He's Lee H. Oswald. In 1959, he defected to Russia. He's chairman of a pro-Castro Fair Play for Cuba committee. He's also accused of killing a policeman who chased him to a, into a theater shortly after Kennedy was shot to death. 
and Governor John Colony Connolly was wounded. He was seized by another officer. We have a report now which uh, has to do with uh, uh, the, a news conference at Parkland Hospital, a report on the condition of Governor John Connolly of Texas, so we switched to that. The scene is the Parkland Hospital at Dallas, Texas. This is Dan Rather of CBS News. The man you are seeing here is the doctor who has been attending Texas Governor John Connolly. We know that the wound of entrance is alongside the shoulder blade here, that the wound of exit was here. We speculate that his arm were perhaps was about in this position and that it fractured his arm here and then went on with him sitting into his left thigh. This is a matter of trying to reconstruct the trajectory of the bullet. He was shot from above and he was in a sitting position. So we feel that this is all one bullet. That, uh, what you have been watching is the official briefing from the doctor at Dallas's Parkland Hospital who has been attending shot Texas Governor John Connolly. As you heard, Governor Connolly is in serious but not critical condition. Mrs. John F. Kennedy left the hospital at approximately the same time the coffin carrying the body of her husband left. The coffin went to a private air installation at Dallas's Love Field. Uh, it either has left or will leave Dallas Love Field in a matter of minutes. Back now to CBS News quarters in New York. We have more news coming in. The body of assassinated President John F. Kennedy is going to lie in repose at the White House tomorrow to be viewed by mourning members of his family and high dignitaries of the government. The general public will not be admitted. The White House announced tonight that the body, flown from Dallas by the same plane that is bringing President Johnson to the nation's capital, will be on view from 10 o'clock tomorrow morning until 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. That plane is due at about 6.15. We have gotten a picture of President Johnson being sworn in by that woman federal judge, which I think we can pick up on this camera, that was done in the executive cabin of the presidential plane. Always the, always the swearing in of a new president has to be done within the shortest practical time after the death of the old. People will remember today as a date to date things in their lives from in the same way that they did in the case of President Roosevelt. They say, where were you when President Roosevelt died? They will say the same thing about where were you when you first heard the news of President Kennedy's assassination. These films were taken slightly less than an hour and a half before President Kennedy was shot and killed in a motorcade in downtown Dallas. The usual receiving line, of course, a number of Dallas dignitaries and a lady who said that she had waited for 69 years to meet a president. President Kennedy had made something of a reputation as a man who liked to break away and shake hands with well-wishers and the crowds who gathered to see him. These are some of the last close-up pictures taken of President Kennedy. Interrupt that for a moment. President Lyndon Johnson has arrived at Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland. He arrived at 5.58 Eastern Standard Time aboard the Air Force jet, which also carried the body of John Kennedy. He's live right now. The one plane, Air Force One, carried the body, the new president, the morning wife. This is a scene at Andrews Air Force Base for the casket of carrying the body of President Kennedy is being transferred to an ambulance. Behind it come Mrs. Kennedy 
and Robert Kennedy. in the ambulance, normally to Bethesda Hospital, where the body will remain for the night. Well, that's how it was then. What you can't see now was that the government of the United States was being improvised in the same way you saw the casket being manhandled. Air Force One had radioed ahead asking for all the books and protocol on the Lincoln assassination and funeral 98 years earlier. The new president, Lyndon Baines Johnson, later told CBS News he thought that the assassination of John Kennedy was the result of a plot and he feared for his own life. So night came and the funeral arrangements were being made and the federal government of the United States worked on self-perpetuation, and the country slept poorly. If I were a carpet, I might look pretty much like other, other carpets. carpets. I'd, I'd be, be colorful, colorful rich-looking. Rich I'd, I'd talk, talk about stains and wear and tear. tear. So how would you be sure I was built to stay this good-looking? Look for this. Because there's only one genuine, authentic, unduplicated, DuPont-certified stained master carpet. And a lot of others trying to get by on appearances. It's not a stained master carpet if it doesn't say DuPont. New Nestle Toll House Ready to Bake Cookie Dough presents Mr. Impatience. When's this show gonna start anyway? Oh, just here? relax, Harry. I can't relax. Everything moves so slow. I know. I'll bake you some nice, fresh Toll House cookies. Toll House cookies? Nah, there's no time for Toll House cookies. I want a snack and I want it now, pal. No, look. These are ready to bake frozen scoops that just take 10 minutes. Uh, I've heard that before. By the time you show up, your clothes will be out of style. Nestle Toll House Ready to Bake Cookie Dough. Warm, melty Toll House cookies, fast at last. What's the matter now, Harry? I can't eat these darn things fast enough. A cheese riddle. Say, ma'am, what do you get when you add Monterey Jack cheese to plain chili? Happy cowboys. Cheese makes it taste even better, so don't forget the cheese. This Proctor Silex coffee maker is $7.77 after rebate, and a three-pack of 3M VHS videotapes is just $8.99. Hey, lots of good stuff here. All over. You can't miss it. Hey, let me tell you, Ace is a place for me. I ate a lot of stuff because it was chic. I mean, I ate raw fish because it was chic. But steaks and burgers, they make me happy. And I like being happy. I got a taste for some real food. My friends, they dragged me to this really trendy restaurant. You know? I didn't know what to expect. I didn't expect roast beef. No, roast beef. So what? Does this mean I've been trendy my whole life? I got a taste for some real food. Four days in November will return. Coming tomorrow on Geraldo. Anyone who left the church came up hurt or dead. From Jonestown till now on the next Geraldo. Geraldo, tomorrow at 4 on the one and only 2. On the next USA Today, it was the most shocking news imaginable. President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Now, 25 years later, the Kennedy legacy lives on. USA Today, the television show, tomorrow night at 7 on Channel 2. This is CBS. What's the bottom line? Your Southern California Toyota dealer's 89 intro sale with introductory deals on the all-new Toyota trucks. The trucks that hold their value better than any other. That outsell their nearest competitor two to one. That have been completely redesigned from the ground up. And these are the trucks that now have extra value packages. No better trucks. No better deals. No better time. And that's the bottom line. Here at Viadent, we make an excellent anti-plaque toothpaste. How we make it is a little unusual. What's unusual is this. 
the Sanguinario Root. It's a fantastic ingredient, and it's ours exclusively. And it's the plaque cleaning power in Viadent. In university lab tests, it's been shown to be effective against 98% of major kinds of plaque bacteria. This might not be so pretty, but brushing with Viadent works like crazy. And to us, that's beautiful. Viadent, the anti-plaque specialists. The dramatic capture of the rooming house murder suspect. The full story at 11. We pick up now with Saturday, the second day of an American tragedy. The most powerful man in America, the leader of the world's most powerful country, had been slain. Heads of state and diplomats made ready to come to Washington and confirm their alliances with our country. Except for China and Albania, every civilized nation in the world would be at the Kennedy funeral. On CBS, all commercials were canceled. All regular programming was suspended. At night, symphony orchestras played classical music. George Herman was at the White House. President John F. Kennedy comes back to the White House for the last time. A simple U.S. Navy ambulance, the flag-draped casket showing in the back. The cars of the procession move up the driveway, lined tonight by small roadway kerosene flares so that the drivers might not be blinded by the floodlights set up here for our television cameras. Up to the north portico, where the rest of the honor guard awaits the casket and the body of President Kennedy. In every city across the country this morning, the symbols of the nation's grief are visible. Shops are closed, flags at half-mast and the stark black headlines of every hometown newspaper tell the story. But perhaps nowhere is the sense of loss, the sense of shame greater than in the city of Dallas, Texas, where the president was assassinated. Dan Rather reports. Dallas police this morning resume questioning the man they have formally charged with assassinating President Kennedy. The man is 24-year-old Lee Oswald a sponsor of ultra-leftist causes, an active member of the Fair Play for Cuba Committee, and a vowed admirer of Cuba's Fidel Castro and Russia. He once lived in Russia. Police say Oswald worked in the building from which the shots that killed the president were fired. He was arrested less than two hours after the president was shot, less than one hour after a Dallas policeman was shot and killed in the downtown area. Oswald first was charged with killing the policeman. Police say they have at least one eyewitness to that. After further questioning, he was formally charged with the president's death. Oswald has admitted nothing. I really don't know what the, what the situation is about. Nobody has told me anything except that I'm accused of, uh, of uh, murdering a policeman. I know nothing more than that, and I do request uh, for someone to come forward to give me uh, a legal assistance. Did you kill the president? No, I've not been charged with that. In fact, nobody has said that to me yet. Uh, the first thing I heard about it was when the newspaper reporters in the hall uh, asked me that question. You have been. Nobody said what? Sir? You have been. Nobody said what? Okay, man. Okay. okay. What did you do in Russia? A policeman hit me. Oswald's Russian-born wife appeared at the police station during the night carrying a small child. Oswald married her in the late 1950s when he was in Russia trying to renounce his American citizenship. Mrs. Oswald, who speaks only limited English, seemed stunned by all that was happening to her and her husband. Police said she told them that her husband owned a gun matching the description of the one believed used in the assassination of the president. That gun is a powerful military rifle which police found in the building from which the president is believed to have been shot. It is an Italian-made gun, the kind carried by most fighting men the world over. The shot that killed the president was fired from approximately 100 yards, which is fairly close range for a gun of this millimeter. More and more Reports, tributes, reaction come in. President Eisenhower. I share the sense of shock and dismay that the entire nation must feel at the despicable act that took the life of the nation's president. On the personal side, Mrs. Eisenhower and I 
share the grief that Mrs. Kennedy must now feel. And we send to her our prayerful thoughts and sympathetic sentiments at this, in this hour. General Eisenhower, uh, will the nation be all right in the few months ahead? I just say this. The American nation is a people of great common sense, hey, and they are not going to be stampeded or bewildered. It, um, you know, we all of us down here know that politics was a tough game. And I don't think there's any point being Irish if you don't know that the world is going to break your heart eventually. I guess we thought we had a little more time. So did he. This is the sodden, soaked north lawn of the White House. Place now an avenue of mourners. Up the driveway here, up the walkway here this morning, there has started a parade of the official mourners of the United States government. They have been moving up in a steady stream, headed by the Chief Justice of the United States, Earl Warren, headed also by former President Dwight Eisenhower, who holds a special capacity in this. He and President Johnson led this period of official governmental mourning for the late President of the United States, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. The expressions of sorrow, of course, have come from all segments of our population. Martin Luther King. You have had attempts made on your life and have been threatened perhaps even tonight. Uh, what is it like to walk under this constant threat? Well, it's often difficult, but when you live with it so long, you almost uh, become immune to being afraid uh, as a result of these threats. Uh, I guess you have to come to the point of looking at these things philosophically. And uh, this is where I have uh, decided to stand. I believe firmly that this cause is right and that uh, someone must have the courage and the fortitude to stand up for it, even if it means suffering or even if it means death. Oh, well, I was uh, very much uh, shocked and hurt when I heard of the passing of the President of the United States. He was a good man, an able president, and he did a good job. And it's too bad that those things have to happen, particularly by some good-for-nothing fellow who didn't have anything else to do but to uh, try to take the head of the state away from us. But uh, we have to meet those things. It's been done time, uh, time and again before. It was attempted one time when I remember it very well but it didn't succeed. I imagine Will you this reminds you of a time Johnson? 20 years ago. Uh, how can you uh, ad advise Mr. Johnson? Uh, as to Mr. Johnson needs any advice, he'll ask me for it. He's the President of the United States. The you? man doesn't volunteer uh, information to the President unless he asks for it. Too many of you did that to me, and I didn't pay any attention to you. Have you been asked to call on the President now? I have not. Have you talked to President Johnson since yes, he's taken I office? I have. I've talked to him. Could you tell us something about the conversation? I will not, because that's confidential. You ask the President if you want to find out. What are your plans something. right now, sir? Go to the hotel and sit down if I can. Now, 23 hours after President Kennedy was shot in the streets of Dallas, the story is still unfolding very slowly as to what went through the minds of the assassin and, indeed, awaiting positive identification of the assassin, although the police in Dallas, Texas, are convinced they have the man. Now let's go to Dallas, where Nelson Benton talked with Police Chief Jesse Curry. With this man's apparent subversive background, was there any surveillance? Uh, were police aware of his presence in Dallas? We and the police department here did not know he was in Dallas. I understand the FBI did know that he was in Dallas. Chief, do you, Chief, yes. Chief, do you have? We did not have. But you were not informed. We had not been informed of this man. Chief, do you have any concern for the safety of your prisoner in view of the high feeling among the people of Dallas over the assassination of the president? No, but precautions necessary, precautions will be taken, of course, but I'm not, uh, I don't think that uh, 
that the people uh, try to take the prisoner away from us. Do you regard the county jail as a more secure place to house the prisoner? Is that why you're transferring him from the city jail? It's customary after a man is filed on that he be transferred. We only keep him in our jail until he is filed on. After he's been filed on, well, then he's the sheriff's responsibility. Will there be extra police at the county jail to assure us? I don't his... know. When Sheriff will Decker. he be transferred, Chief? I do not know. Uh, where is the county jail? At the end, about a block from where the president was killed. This is Lee Henry Oswald, the man charged with the murder of President Kennedy as he is led from the police headquarters in Dallas, perhaps being transferred now to the county jail. Let's switch down there and see if we can pick up word of it. Uh, we do have this. Uh, the Federal Bureau of Investigation has uh, asked us and we join in with them in requesting that any person uh, who was in the vicinity of the assassination yesterday who was taking pictures uh, bring these pictures to the police department here uh, anyone who has any information concerning this certainly uh, should contact the police department immediately uh, but particularly anyone and it's it's logical i think that uh, since the president's motorcade was going through someone in that area might have had cameras and might have been taking pictures the assassination was filmed by an amateur. CBS News had the film briefly at the time, but for legal reasons, we could not broadcast it. This short clip is the most examined film in history. The man on the left has a car with plush interior, European styling, room for five. The man on the right has all that too, plus front wheel drive. But one big difference between these two cars is that the man on the left is still paying for his. The affordable Hyundai Excel. Hyundai, cars that make sense. Right now, factory to dealer cash incentives can save you up to $500 on a new Excel. You've got this all wrong. You want to make news of the cereal today, you need a gimmick. Putting a whole banana inside a little bran biscuit, stuff like that. These are just flakes. Mmm. I don't think I've tasted anything like it. Simple, light, it's really very good. Well, how about that? A cereal that doesn't need a gimmick. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Corn Flakes? Taste them again for the first time. I hope the turkey isn't dry. With a deep-basted butterball turkey, you know every slice is moist, tender, you see? Juicy. It's very juicy. It's a butterball. The perfect Thanksgiving recipe for over 30 years. After all, it's butterball. If you like our hot, flaky Sara Lee croissants for breakfast, may we make a little suggestion for dinner? Sara Lee Petite Croissants. Nobody doesn't like Sara Lee. Learning how to talk fast is one way to save on international calls. In French, Mr. Duffy. Ah, bonjour. JVN, comment à vous. J'ai vous fait. Hallo, mir geht es gut. Wir gehen es Ihnen. Ich möchte Ihnen gerne eine wichtige Ansage über das Zeugnis, was wir machen. Wir sind über 10.000 Büros in allen Teilen der Welt unterhalten. Wussten Sie zum Beispiel, dass wir 10.000 Büros in allen Teilen der Welt unterhalten? Now, there's a better way to save with U.S. Sprint's international long distance sale. Save as much as 10 to 34 percent if you call before November 30th and switch to Sprint.
the 15 years preceding the Kennedys, the White House had been gray. Presidents Truman and Eisenhower were middle Americans, and their wives were plain and frugal. That changed with Jack and Jackie. You are watching scenes from a hastily prepared biography CBS News broadcast that weekend. Tapes and films were rushed from our vaults, and my colleague Harry Reasoner improvised from notes. As we look back from today, one thing was apparent. While Jack Kennedy was new and young, he was as old in the Cold War as his predecessor, Dwight Eisenhower. Kennedy made it clear in his inaugural address that he would go to any lengths to contain communism. And that was the message he brought to Cuba, to Berlin, to Vietnam. Let the word go forth from this time and place to friend and foe alike that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans born in this century, tempered by war, disciplined by a hard and bitter peace, proud of our ancient heritage, and unwilling to witness or permit the slow undoing of those human rights to which this nation has always been committed and to which we Less than four months after John Kennedy took office, an assault was mounted on Cuba in the pre-dawn hours of April 17, 1961. Anti-Castro rebels landed on the swampy beaches of Las Villas province. Cuban forces beat off the attackers. The debacle came to be known as the Bay of Pigs disaster. This is not the first time in either ancient or recent history that a small band of freedom fighters has engaged the armor of totalitarianism. We intend to intensify our efforts for a struggle in many ways more difficult than war, where disappointment will often accompany us. The summer and fall of 1962 saw more concern about Cuba and the presence of Soviet troops there. Some members of Congress complained that the Russians were building missile installations which were a threat to our security. President Kennedy took to national radio and television, and he stated the United States position clearly. It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States, requiring a full retaliatory response upon the Soviet Union. Less than three months ago, Mr. Kennedy was interviewed by Walter Cronkite, and he warned then that the dispute between Buddhists and government in South Vietnam imperiled the effectiveness of the war against the Viet Cong communists. In the final analysis, it's their war. They're the ones who have to win it or lose it. We can help them, we can give them equipment, we can send our men out there as advisors, but they have to win it, the people of Vietnam, against the communists. We're prepared to President Kennedy made a 10-day tour of Western Europe early last summer in an apparent effort to convince Europe's leaders that the United States planned to stick by its pledge to ensure the freedom of the continent. Wherever he went, his reception was enthusiastic, but nowhere more so than in the divided city of Berlin. There are some who say that communism is the wave of the future. Let them come to Berlin. It's... And there are even a few who say that it's true that communism is an evil system, but it permits us to make economic progress. Lost the not Berlin in common. Let them come. Among the things that we know that Mr. Kennedy was, was the first real master of the English language to be president since Abraham Lincoln. He was eminently quotable, adaptably witty. It's been a long time since a president and his family have been subjected such to, to such a heavy barrage of teasing and fun poking and satire. Can you tell us uh, whether you read and listen to these things and whether they produce annoyment or enjoyment? <laughs> annoyment. Uh, no, they produce, uh, I, yes, I have read them and listened to them. 
Actually, I listened to Mr. Meter's record, but I thought it sounded more like Teddy than it did me, but... Uh... <laughs> He's annoyed. We understand the, uh, would you save us a couple of hours' work tonight and explain what the Band-Aid is doing on your left hand? <laughs> well, I cut my finger when I was cutting bread. Unbelievable as it may uh, sound. I wonder if you could tell us whether, if you had it to do over again, you would uh, work for the presidency and whether you can recommend the job to others. Uh, well, the answer is... Uh, the first is yes, and the second is no. I don't recommend it to others. <laughs> At least for a while. <laughs> John Kennedy came from a great Irish family, descendant on both sides of immigrants who came to this country in the mid-19th century. He was born in Brooklyn, Massachusetts, the second of nine children of millionaire Joseph Kennedy. His older brother, Joe, was killed in World War II, and John was then the oldest of the family. He was followed by the four girls here with their parents. The family was completed with the addition of another girl and the two little boys, Teddy and Bobby. On September 12, 1953, John Kennedy was married to Jacqueline Le Bouvier. Shyer than the exuberant Kennedys, she nevertheless helped him on the path to the highest office in the land. We first met her when as wife of candidate John F. Kennedy, she talked with our reporter. This is my daughter, Caroline Kennedy, who's two years old. Can you say good morning? How does it feel to be the wife of a candidate? I suppose it depends on the candidate, but I enjoy being married to John Kennedy very much. As the wife of John Kennedy, the President of the United States, Jacqueline Kennedy tried to spend as much time as possible with her children, and she often combined being a hostess with being a mother. Here she's introducing the Empress of Iran to her son, John. The American people also saw the president as a father. What's the secret to pop secret microwave popcorn? Perfect popcorn popped under perfect conditions. Pop secret leaves very few unpopped kernels. Pop secret from Betty Crocker. It's the only way to pop. Pop secret introduces the perfect addition to perfect popcorn. New cheese. Pop secret. 
now with a great taste of real cheese. Ice. McDonald's presents gifts your kids will love. Holiday Huggable Muppet Babies. For a limited time only, you can get these holiday gifts for a special low price with any McDonald's food purchase. Good night, baby piggy. They're only at McDonald's, so hurry on in. A cheese riddle. Oh, Mrs. Murphy, what do you get when you add melted cheddar cheese to your basic peas? Irish eyes are smiling. That's right, cheese makes it taste better. So don't forget the cheese. Yeah, you are home early, huh? Then can be so stupid. Yeah, yeah. Well, say, how about some Campbell's home cooking soup? Grandpa, chicken soup can't fix everything. No, you got to have some tomatoes and celery and carrots, too. You know, honey, your grandmother never, ever called me stupid. No, she always called me pinhead. Oh, Grandpa. I knew some soup would make you feel better. Home cooking soups from Campbell. They got their name because of their taste. They say that when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Introducing the new Dodge Cummins Turbo Diesel. Full-size Dodge Ram with new anti-lock rear brakes. And the new Dodge dual rear wheel pickup. Now you know what the tough get going in. Four days in November will return. Saturday, the never-before-told story of the Jonestown tragedy. Tim Stone, the man closest to Jim Jones, returns to Guyana on West 57th, Saturday. The word is out on Almost Grown. It's for anyone who survived love, high school, and puberty during the 60s, or came of age during the 70s. A class act, smart and innovative, taps the nostalgia vein and produces a gusher. Quirky, silly, engrossing and different. Blame it on rock and roll. Almost Grown, premiering Sunday, November 27th on CBS. I'm Morley Safer. While campaigning for the governorship of Tennessee, this future president was warned that he would be shot at a public meeting. He attended the meeting as planned, where he faced a hostile crowd. Fellow citizens, he said, I have been informed that part of the business to be transacted is the assassination of the individual who is now addressing you. He then invited anyone who had the intention of shooting him to do so. The crowd fell silent, and he delivered his speech. That display of courage helped make him a national figure and later a president, President Andrew Johnson. You can live your dream. Be a beautiful brunette, fabulous blonde, or radiant redhead with Altress. Only Altress has a gel colorant. What a difference. And the color? Gorgeous. Be the best you've ever been with Altress gel colorant. This is CBS. Oh. You can depend on me. No. Me. No, no. No. Depend on new improved Kodak batteries to last longer than ever. So day or night, we'll be there. Yeah. We got down. 4,500 trucks in 45 days. Now, that's what your Southern California Chevrolet dealer is out to sell. That's why he's making the best truck deals that he's ever offered. On extended cab, sports side, EL economy model, one tons, V6 and V8. With factory rebates and discounts on option packages worth up to $2,400. So can your Chevy dealer make you a deal? Hey, he can't afford not to. 4,500 trucks in 45 days. From Jonestown till now, on the next road. Four days in November. Sunday, November 24th. Day three of CBS News coverage of the Kennedy assassination and burial. This memorial is made solely of material broadcast during that period. Since then, hundreds of books and articles, millions of words and pictures have analyzed the material you're seeing. Since then, we know more, but feel less. On the third day, Sunday, we grieved. 
the dead president's body was being moved from the White House to the Capitol, where he would lie in state for his countrymen to see him. Since early morning, a small crowd of people has been gathered across the street from the White House, standing silent, staring, paying quiet respects. That crowd has grown larger and larger until now you can see thousands of people streaming down the streets to take their places along the route that the funeral cortege will take. And now we switch to CBS News correspondent George Herman. The Capitol Plaza, which has played so important a role in our nation's history so often, is ready for its part in today's proceedings. The honor guard is not yet formed up. It's waiting out of the blasts of wintry cold wind that are sweeping across the plaza, shaking the rifles of the men as they stand, shaking everything on the plaza almost. And here at the Capitol Plaza, the crowd continues to swell, people pouring in from all sides of this historic spot. We are now switching to Dallas, where they are about to move Lee Oswald. the shot fired said it was fired by a man wearing a black hat a brown coat a man that everyone down here thought was a secret service agent the oswald was moved immediately from the area no one knows at this time where lee harold oswald is uh, at the present time word is that an ambulance is being ready to take Oswald away. We can hear sirens outside, and an ambulance apparently is moving down now into the basement. Here comes the ambulance, and uh, Oswald will be removed now. The ambulance is being pulled up in front of us here. It is almost unbelievable. Here, someone has... Please, get back. Okay, just get low. Okay, okay, okay. Pat, can you move? Okay. Pat, move just a little to your left. We can see now that police are hemming go. off the newsmen in the basement okay. of the Dallas City Hall, hemming them off so that uh, Lee Oswald can be taken to an ambulance, which was just brought into the basement the, uh, of the City Hall. We're switching now to Bob Huffacker downstairs. Oswald will be moved quickly outside. And the only word so far is that the shot came from a man wearing a black hat and a coat. Here comes Oswald. He's, he is ashen and unconscious at this time, now being moved in. He's not moving. He's in the ambulance now. And attendants, police are quickly climbing in. They're now having to remove the armored truck from the head of the basement entrance here. For the situation at this hour in Washington, let us go now to the White House and Robert Pierpoint. The military caisson is standing by, the caisson on which the casket will be transported up to Capitol Hill in the rotunda. Catholic priests who've been praying throughout the night coming out now. Mrs. Kennedy, Caroline, and John.
the cortege is forming ahead of the caisson. And now the caisson and the casket are moving down the drive. was a man, mark the scars of his love of country, a body active with the surge of a life, far from spent, and in a moment it was no more. And so she took a ring from her finger and placed it in his hand. There was a father with a little boy and a little girl, and the joy of each in the other hand, in a moment, it was no more. And so, she took a ring from her finger and placed it in his hands. There was a husband who asked much and gave much, and out of the giving and the asking, Woe with a woman, what could not be broken in life, and in a moment, it was no more. And so, she took a ring from her finger and placed it in his hands, and kissed him, and closed the lid of the coffin. A piece of each of us died at that moment.
Nestle Toll House Ready to Bake Cookie Dough presents the Cookie Complex. I just need time, time to make Toll House cookies. Like your mother made? Why, yes. Do you have a freezer? Yes. Do you have an oven? Yes. Do you have ten minutes? Yes. Yes. Warm Toll House cookies fast at last. Same time next week and bring the cookies. Chasing the chill away from a rainy day. Oh, something to warm you up. Wrap your hands around it. America's Cup, America's Cup. Dipping cup of soup. Hearty, wholesome. America's favorite cup of soup. America's Cup, America's Cup. Dipping cup of soup. America's Cup. Overblown hair needs hot oil help. Overstyled hair needs hot oil help. One minute, once a week, and VO5 Hot Oil's heat-activated conditioners make hair look this lustrous. Got overworked hair? Get help. Alberto VO5 Hot Oil. Officers and staff of Royal Caribbean Cruise Line invite you to join them for seven days of absolute perfection. RSVP, your local travel agent. And don't just cruise the Caribbean, cruise the Royal Caribbean. It was the greatest grief and the greatest mystery of the American century. The murderer had been murdered, the assassin assassinated. Tears and suspicion were everywhere. In the emotional state of the nation, the word conspiracy arose. Newsmen, police, intelligence agencies examined the evidence. What were the motives of Oswald the killer? Who was the killer's killer? Back then, this is what we knew, and this is how I reported it. And Dallas police accused of assassinating Lee Oswald was known in Dallas as Jack Ruby, not taking his real name, the name he carried in Chicago before he came to Dallas in 1948 of Jack Rubenstein. This is a police mug photo of Jack Rubenstein. Through the facilities of affiliate station KRLD-TV in Dallas, CBS News this morning had a live camera in the basement of the Dallas City Police Station when Lee Oswald, after two days of questioning, was in the process of being brought from the Dallas City Police Station, the city jail, to the county jail. Now this was the scene in the basement of the Dallas City Jail. There'll be a hat appearing on the right-hand corner of your screen. Keep your eye on the man in that hat. The hat begins to move. Now moves in front of Oswald. Shot sounds. And Oswald lurches. And the crowd starts to move in. Oswald was rushed to Dallas's Parkland Hospital. This ambulance comes to the same emergency entrance to which President Kennedy was brought on Friday. Through the same entrance now goes the man accused of assassinating the president. Oswald was moving, still alive at this point. Brought down the same corridor down which President Kennedy had been brought on Friday. Police well, sealed off the area. The ambulance driver who brought Oswald from the Dallas city jail had about all he could handle with newsmen who were frantically trying to get some kind of details and some kind of order in the way of a story out of the confusion which followed the shooting. Now Oswald's wife, child, are led into the emergency room. His Russian-born wife, who speaks very little English. This is a shot of the emergency room where President Kennedy died on Friday. It is identical to the emergency room to which Lee Oswald was brought this morning. The Oswald, 
emergency room, the one to which he was brought directly across the hall from this one. It was announced that some 12 doctors were working feverishly over Lee Oswald in the Parkland Hospital. But then a short while after that, at Dallas Police Headquarters, Police Chief Jesse Curry came out to make this announcement. My statement will be very brief. Oswald expired at 1.07 p.m. He died at 1.07 p.m. We have arrested the man. The man will, will be charged with murder. Who is he? The, man, the suspect's name is Jack Rubenstein, I believe. He goes by the name of Jack Ruby. That's all I have to say. We will now return to Washington. Until just a moment ago, the people who passed by the beer were close friends and uh, family of the late president and official guests. Just a moment ago, the lines were opened, and now the masses who have assembled here in the plaza are passing down a long double file of Army, Navy, Marine, Air Force soldiers standing at parade rest. This is the north end of the Capitol building, the Senate wing, packed as solidly as they could be packed. The original plan was here to close the bronze doors of the rotunda at nine this evening and then provide the public one last hour tomorrow. The White House has announced that the doors will remain open as long as there are people. As the citizens of this nation pay final tribute to President Kennedy at the Capitol in Washington, and as foreign dignitaries converge upon Washington for the funeral tomorrow, the immediate bereaved family also begins to gather in Washington. A few moments ago, from Hyannisport, Mrs. Rose Kennedy departed for the District of Columbia. The president's father, 75-year-old Joseph P. Kennedy, who suffered a stroke two years ago, is too ill to go to Washington. Mrs. Rose Kennedy is going up the steps now. Behind her, her daughter, Mrs. Eunice Shriver, and finally her son, Senator Ted Kennedy. Senator Ted Kennedy has just gone up the ramp. A cordon of secret police, state and local police, formed around the car as soon as it arrived. Now those security forces are boarding the plane, and the Caroline should be taking off momentarily. Here is Ted Kennedy. He may have something to say. Senator Kennedy? I would uh, just like to say a word. I'm going down to uh, Washington now with my mother and my sister Eunice. I do want to say how appreciative that both my parents have been for the uh, tremendous outpouring of thoughtfulness and prayers that have come from all Americans in all parts of the country, from every religious group. And this has been a matter which has been a source of trem tremendous consolation uh, to uh, both my parents, and they certainly wanted me to express their great thanks to all of the people who have been so kind in remembering them now. Senator Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you. Very sorry, sir. Let's go now to Dallas, Texas, and to Dan Rather. Those who knew Jack Ruby or Jack Rubenstein described him as an extrovert, a handshaking, backslapping type. What you might expect, said one of his friends, of a man who operated nightclubs. He had to get along with the public, and he knew how to get along with the public. 
He had been a familiar figure around the police station ever since Lee Oswald had been picked up. He chatted with reporters. He was put in several appearances in the corridors where newsmen had waited for word on the questioning of Oswald. He was well known to a number of Dallas city policemen. One of the first policemen interviewed in the basement of the police station after the shooting. When asked if he knew who fired the shot, said, yes, I recognize the man. I know who it is. Did, did you know the man? Did you see the man before? Yes, he did. Sir, did yes. You, uh, you, you saw his face? Yes, sir. And you knew him? Yes, sir. Uh, Sources in the police station explain it this way. They say that Rubenstein knew a number of policemen. He knew a number of newsmen. He'd been around the station for several days, and therefore, it did not appear unusual when he showed up this morning and that he probably didn't have any difficulty getting and staying into the basement area. This is Roger Mudd in Rotunda, the capital in Washington. The line which formed here begins at the north end of the Senate and runs across the east front plaza, down Maryland Avenue, down Massachusetts Avenue, behind Lincoln Park to the D.C. Stadium on the Anacostia River, doubles back down East Capitol Street, 40 blocks long, four abreast, estimated by police at 500,000. here will remain open until they must be closed at 10 o'clock tomorrow. About an hour ago, the lines were doubled up so that now instead of single file and two abreast, there are three and four abreast, and the rate has been doubled, perhaps 10 to 12,000 an hour. But this can hardly reduce the size by dawn. You know, the idea of maple and brown sugar oatmeal didn't really come from Quaker. Here. Started right here in Vermont. Folks would tap a maple tree and then cook the syrup down and then pour a little over their hot oatmeal, fresh. Good stuff. Well, they don't do that much anymore. Heck, if you already got natural maple in your oatmeal, why would you tap a tree? Instant Quaker oatmeal. It's the right thing to do. And as natural as a forest full of maples. How bad is your sinus headache? Does it hurt here and here? Can you feel the pressure here and here? Now there's maximum strength Sinaid. No matter how bad it is, Sinaid gives you maximum strength relief without drowsiness. Sinaid handles both the terrible pain and the pressure. Not even extra strength headache medicines can do that. Maximum strength Sinaid. No pain, no pressure, no sinus headache. Nothing great lasts forever. Even the great crab harvest of 88 at Red Lobster. This may be your last chance to taste these six crab and seafood combinations starting at $7.95 with succulent king crab and delicate snow crab to dip, drip, and savor. Remember, all great things must come to an end. So hurry to the great crab harvest of 88 at Red Lobster. Friday through Sunday, try our steak and shrimp special. It's new, just $9.95. This message is brought to you by Maytag. The dependability, people. Your day begins with the bare necessities. Luberderm Lotion, created for dermatologists, absorbs quickly, every day, everywhere. Luberderm, your bare necessity. Four days in November will return. Whenever she needs him, he is there. Vincent, 
this is fun. Whatever his pain, she will soothe him. I'm trying to spare you more disappointment. Theirs is a love so pure, so passionate, so forbidden. The season premiere of Beauty and the Beast, Friday. Who's this man being brought into a 60 Minutes interview in chains? He's Jonathan Pollard, the man who gave American military secrets to Israel. He's on 60 Minutes Sunday. This is CBS. Presenting the French Revolution in Deep Fryers. Deep Fowl, the French fryer. Unlike Fryers Ordinaire, Deep Fowl has a basket you raise and lower from the outside. And a locking lid. Voila. No spills, no burns, no mess. And its charcoal filter helps you say au revoir to cooking odors. Tefal deep fries the French way. Light, crisp, delicious. Get Tefal, the French fryer, and cook up something revolutionary. Tefal appliances available at Williams Sonoma and other fine stores. Just in time for the holidays, it's the Broadway What a Saturday Super Sale, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Saturday. Save 20 to 50 percent throughout the store, only at the Broadway. Hello, I'm John Schubeck. Coming up on Action News at 11 o'clock tonight, a fire that is causing quite a problem in the Baldwin Hills area is just about under control, but it has been quite a problem for firefighters tonight. At least three, maybe four homes have been burned in the View Park area. It's on the south side of Stocker Street, burning up a hill just above the Baldwin Hills Regional Shopping Center. Well, the whole story, high winds and low water pressure making it tough for the firefighters. Plus, the suspect in the Sacramento mass murders case is behind bars tonight, and we're going to have the exclusive story behind her capture right here in L.A. We'll see you at 11. The story is behind tomorrow's headlines, weeknights at 7 on Channel 2. We can bring you the events of four days in 1963, but we can't bring back the emotions. The country was filled with rumors. America was heavy with threat, destabilized, fearful. Monday was declared a day of mourning. Although Washington was to be the site of the ceremonies, one city is not a continent. A whole nation was in shock. America needed calming, and it happened because television carried it all. Hour after hour, day after day, from murder to burial, the flow of images and pictures calmed the panic. Someone has said that those four days marked the coming of age of television. We cannot bring back the emotions. We can only show the events. Monday, November 25th, 1963. The great bronze doors to the rotunda of the Capitol have now been closed. Each 30 minutes, the military honor guard was changed all through the night. Five men representing the five branches with a slow, measured, unspoken cadence, silent command, their bodies almost welded together as they moved off the rotunda to be replaced with another precision guard. now estimate that the total crowd that has moved through here, through the rotunda, to pay its last respects to the president, amounted to about 400,000. The crowd that is formed on the plaza looks very much like the one that formed here uh, just 24 hours ago. The military guard, of Air Force, Army, Marine, Navy, dressing up its ranks. These men are from the military district of Washington, which serves as a ceremonial guard for occasions of state, precise traditions of the military that have passed from generation to generation. These men trained in the absolute decorum and precision of such occasions. Approaching from the south end is the empty caisson drawn by the white horses. Turning toward the east to make a loop and stop in front of the east front steps. 
on the riderless horse with the inverted stirrups and the pair of black cavalry boots, toes pointed toward the rear.
wins its way through the streets of Washington. procession will go up Connecticut Avenue to St. Matthew's Cathedral. Mrs. Kennedy is walking the same route that she has taken many times on her way to Mass with President Kennedy. The heads of state are walking along behind not since the burial of the unknown soldier 40 years ago in Arlington Cemetery has there been so many foreign dignitaries in Washington. McDonald's presents Holiday Huggable Muppet Babies. Oh, did someone mention a hug, Kermie? <laughs> right now, get your kids Baby Kermit, Baby Fozzie, or Baby Piggy. They're soft and huggable for a special price with any McDonald's food purchase. Do you know where I could get a hug? No, but if you sing a little of it, I think I can follow along. <laughs> Holiday Huggable Muppet Babies at McDonald's. A portion of the proceeds of each Muppet Baby plush toy will be donated to Ronald McDonald Children's Charities. Florida quality orange juice. It wakes you up and it tastes like a dream. Orange juice. There's nothing like it in the 100%. 
and pure Florida quality. The this six outlet power center is only $449, and a GE 70 light midget set is only $399. Hey, here's a winning play. Grab the Ace Best Buy and go deep. Hey, let me tell you, Ace is a place for me. Hey, Ted, a little higher. My head really hurts. I don't care what anyone says about pain relievers. The only thing that really counts is, will it work for me? Advil does. Just one Advil is as effective as two regular aspirin, so one's usually enough. But when my head's really pounding, two Advil make quick work of the pain. Advil, it's what works for me. Before, there was only aspirin or Tylenol, but today, there's Advil. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Heartburn flaring up? It never seems to stop. How long have you been taking antacids? Seems like forever. Have you told the doctor? Won't he just tell me to take these? Not necessarily. Nowadays, doctors can diagnose and treat your heartburn and indigestion. Now, that's worth a visit to the doctor. If you've been suffering from persistent heartburn, indigestion, or stomach pain, this could be a serious problem. Make an appointment to see your doctor now. Brought to you by Glaxo Pharmaceuticals. Outside of St. Matthew's Cathedral, the casket bearing the body of the late president now emerges into the sunshine. session begins. Off to Arlington National Cemetery. is on the base leg of the Memorial Bridge and starts its final journey across the river, a bridge that the President so often traveled on his trips to the airport to greet the visiting heads of state who are now here to escort him across.
cemetery. Pipes of the U.S. Air Force bagpipe contingent, sounding off as the casket is removed from the hearse. Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Let us pray. O oh God, through whose mercy the souls of the faithful find rest, he pleased to bless this grave. Send thy holy angel to keep it and loose from the body we bury herein. And of our beloved Jack Kennedy, 85th President of the United States, I that his soul may rejoice in thee with all the saints, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
goes to the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Remember the new carpet, darling. Are you going to live in fear of your new carpet? Or buy a worry-free carpet from Allied Fibers? With a five-year warranty against dirt, wear, and more stains than other stain-resistant carpets, it takes out something other carpets can't. The worry. Thank you, darling. Oh, you forgot the orange juice. Worry-free carpet. It's more than just stain-resistant. It's totally worry-free. Look under specially marked Chunky Lids and you could win this year's Chunky Sweepstakes, a half million dollars worth of prizes, including a trip to be an honorary coach of the Pro Bowl in Hawaii. They're not getting my job without a struggle. Campbell's Chunky. It takes care of the meanest appetites.
There's something exciting going on this Friday and Saturday at J.C. Penney. The two-day sale. Two big days to save throughout the store. The two-day sale this Friday and Saturday. J.C. Penney. On the same day Jack Kennedy was buried, Lee Harvey Oswald went to his grave. Just the immediate family and a minister were present. There were not enough men to move the coffin, so newsmen, anxious to finish their assignment, helped put him in the ground. Marina Oswald has remarried. Recently, she said that she felt that her husband had not acted alone and that he was part of a conspiracy to kill the president. As for Oswald and the conspiracy, the talk still goes on. History has no last chapter, of course, but the current consensus is that he was a bitter man who had acted alone. One of the keys to history died with Jack Ruby. Convicted of the murder of Oswald, against his attorney's advice, he insisted on a lie detector test to show that he had killed Oswald only to spare Mrs. Kennedy the pain of a trial in Dallas. He died in jail of cancer. Robert Kennedy, Attorney General of the United States at the time these pictures were taken, was assassinated in 1968 while running for the presidency. Edward Kennedy, senator from the state of Massachusetts, still holds that position today. Mrs. John F. Kennedy married again. Her second husband died. Today she lives in New York and works in the publishing business. She is a grandmother. Caroline Kennedy has become an attorney. John Kennedy is a law student at New York University. So end our images from those four days. Those who measure time in eras will count those four days as the beginning of a turbulent period that has yet to end. Something violent had been shaken loose in the American subconscious. But a personal note, based on the many years CBS News and I have spent investigating, thinking about these four days, it was a day we haven't shown that also has a lot of meaning for me. The fifth day, Tuesday. On Tuesday, America went back to work. The Constitution of the United States provides for the orderly transition to the presidency, and that's what took place. So it is Tuesday I often think of. Some 200 million people went about their business, and America continued on course. I'm Dan Rather. Good night. Channel 2 Action News is next tonight. Fire lights up the night sky, destroying homes in the View Park area near Baldwin Hills. We'll go live to the scene. Plus, a suspect in the rooming house murders controversy tonight about how television covered the capture of Dorothea Montavo Puente. Also just ahead on Action News tonight, an international incident known as Beaujolais Nouveau. Why America hungers for a French wine fresh from the press. And the magic of Disney animation. It comes to life in Oliver and Company. New twist on the old Dickens tale, if you will. That plus the cold, cold weather and Keith with the last word in sports. Stay tuned. transcript of this broadcast, please send $3 to CBS News Transcript, 267 Broadway, New York, New York, 10007.